Thank you. And we now turn to our next item of business, which is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action has been taken in response to recent allegations of child sexual exploitation in the Govan Hill area of Glasgow. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. The allegations of child sex sexual exploitation in the Govan Hill area made in the press over the weekend are deeply concerning and anyone with evidence of uh, suspected crimes should contact the police in the first instance. Police Scotland has stated that while they have no information or intelligence to substantiate the claims made in the article, those claims are being fully investigated. Should they uncover any evidence of an offence having been committed or that there are children or young people at risk of harm, they will pursue that as they normally would. Should the investigation lead to the identification of any child protection concerns, Police Scotland will work closely with Glasgow City Council Social Work and with others to ensure that children are protected from harm. Scotland's agencies work tirelessly to tackle all forms of child sexual abuse and it's important that uh, perpetrators know that the criminal acts, their criminal acts or exploitation in any form will never be tolerated in Scotland. Everyone has a responsibility to protect children and young people from harm and abuse. That includes reporting signs of child exploitation and abuse so it can be stopped. Liam MacArthur. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, response to claims that have been made uh, on the back of the Times investigation at the weekend, as he said, are truly sickening. No child should ever be put in such an awful uh, position. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that uh, Olive Ahrens, Chief Executive of Up To Us, a charity that works with vulnerable teenagers, is reported to have said uh, it is very clear that uh, what was taking place, but nothing ever happened to stop it. Social workers, community representatives and re residents have also expressed concerns. Uh, therefore, can he confirm again whether Glasgow City Council, Police Scotland or any other body have ever received reports of this nature? And if so, what exactly was done as a result? And the Times has reported that social workers were aware of concerns uh, and how were these escalated? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, I think the member will recognise that there is now a, an investigation being taken forward by Police Scotland and as they have set out, all of the individuals who are named in that particular article will be uh, invited to uh, interview and to make statements to Police Scotland, which will then allow them to assess whether there, there is intelligence of, uh, that su substantiates the allegations made within the article itself. Police Scotland have also stated very clearly uh, that they have not received any um, intelligence uh, or information that substantiate the claims which are made within the article that the member uh, referred uh, to. Additionally, uh, Glasgow City Council uh, have confirmed that none of the allegations made in the article have been brought to their attention uh, previously. In relation to allegations which have been made in the past, when information received by Police Scotland or by uh, Glasgow City Council uh, social work services, that's dealt with through the normal child protection procedures in uh, making sure that if there are allegations or concerns about vulnerability regarding young people, that these issues are fully investigated. And these are matters which are taken forward by the Child Protection Committee within Glasgow City Council, which is a multi-agency uh, body that's responsible for looking at issues relating to uh, child protection matters and anything to do with uh, child exploitation. And any allegations in the past would have been dealt with through that process. Uh, but I want to uh, assure the member that although there is no uh, evidence um, or intelligence to substantiate the allegations at the present time, uh, these are being thoroughly investigated by Police Scotland and also by Glasgow City Council Social Work Department to address any concerns which come from these allegations and that appropriate measures are then taken should they be substantiated. Lee MacArthur. Thank you. And I can again thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, detailed response. We've obviously seen atrocious abuse in areas such as Rotherham uh, and in that instance there was evidence that concerns were dismissed uh, or ignored. Will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that there are no barriers that might discourage people from coming forward with reports, particularly from within the community itself? And will he report back to Parliament with a full statement in due course? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, the issue of uh, child sex sexual exploitation is a complex one and one which is very often hidden. It's an area of uh, criminal activity and abuse of children that is very often underreported uh, and can present challenges for the 
uh, law enforcement agencies such as our police and also our child protection agencies, uh, which can present challenges for them to be able to address these things uh, in the way in which they would often uh, wish to. That's why it's extremely important that we recognise that tackling issues around uh, child abuse uh, are not solely the responsibility of our police or our local authority social work departments. We all have a collective responsibility in making sure that we look after the welfare uh, and the needs of our young people uh, who are vulnerable. And if we have any concerns uh, about the potential for young people being exploited or abused, that we should have the confidence to be able to report those to the appropriate agencies. Uh, what I want to assure anyone who has evidence or concerns regarding any children within the Govan Hill area or anywhere else in Scotland for that matter, because child sexual exploitation uh, can take place in any community um, across the country, that where they have concerns, the most appropriate way in which to take those forward is to report them to the authorities, whether that be Police Scotland or the local authority social work department, to allow them to then assess that information and, if necessary, to make sure that any children who are being abused are getting the right protection as quickly as possible. And I want to encourage people that those actions will be taken forward sensitively by the police and by local authority social work departments to make sure that children get the support and assistance they require as and when it's necessary. Liam MacArthur. Yet again, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary? He's absolutely right in terms of the importance of the collective, collaborative and holistic approach that needs to be taken. It's rightly recognised following the abuse cases in Rotherham and in Rochdale that Scotland was not immune from um, such exploitation. So can the Cabinet Secretary update Parliament on what steps were taken after this to identify and address any weaknesses, enhance coordination and intelligence gathering and improve child protection processes? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, a number of areas of action were taken forward by the Scottish Government in relation to making sure that we had robust, effective child protection measures in place. One of the areas of work that was taken forward was the Child Protection Improvement Programme, which was to ensure the effective protection is in place for all children at risk from abuse and neglect. Alongside that programme, uh, work included uh, aspects in relation to neglect, child sexual exploitation, internet safety, uh, child trafficking, leadership and uh, workforce development, joint inspections, data uh, and evidence and the children's hearing system. And that independent system review uh, looked also at our Child Protection Committee system in Scotland, including uh, initial case reviews, significant case reviews and the Child Protection registered. The report uh, was uh, published on the 2nd of March of this year, uh, which set out a range of recommendations. Uh, those recommendations were accepted in full, and the National Child Protection Leadership Group is now driving forward that improvement work, which is chaired by the Minister for Children and Early Years. So I hope that reassures the member about the range of work and assessment that have been undertaken to make sure that our uh, child protection measures are as robust and effective as possible. Having said that, we can never, ever afford to be complacent in this area. And that's why our agencies continually review the way in which they take forward actions relating to child protection matters, to make sure that they are as robust and effective as possible. And the improvement works, which are now being driven forward by the Minister for Children and Early Years with the Leadership Group, will help to ensure that we continue to develop and make progress on the good uh, programmes that we have in place at the moment, but making sure that they continue to reflect on where learning can be gained, whether it be from here in Scotland or elsewhere, and how we can make sure that the protections for children are as robust as possible. Ian Gray. Thank you, President Officer. These concerns are uh, not new, as the Cabinet Secretary will know. They were first raised some 12 years ago, uh, and three years ago the local community council was minuting their concerns as well. They've arisen again now. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary assure us that uh, uh, what is promised is a full investigation going beyond uh, normal police and child protection procedures? Well, President Officer, I think we uh, need to put this in some context. There are allegations which have been made within the course of a newspaper article. Uh, Police Scotland and Glasgow City Council Social Work Department have made it very clear that they're investigating those allegations uh, right at this moment. Uh, as it stands at the present moment, they don't have any intelligence or information to substantiate these claims. Um, issues relating to what happened in the past are issues which were dealt with at that time by both the police and by the local authority. What I would say to members at this particular time 
uh, is that now is the time to actually support our law enforcement bodies such as Police Scotland, our child protection social workers who have a lead responsibility in investigating these types of issues, the other third sector organisations that are there to support children who may be vulnerable and who potentially are being exploited to support them in the work that they're undertaking in relation to these particular allegations and to identify whether they can be substantiated. And if they are substantiated, to ensure that robust measures are taken against those who are perpetrators and also in protecting the interests of those children who have been exploited. But at this stage, I think all members, presiding officer, would be minded to support those organisations that are undertaking that investigation at this present moment and have assured us that that will be a very thorough and detailed investigation into the allegations which have been made. Annie Wells. Thank you, presiding officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that Police Scotland will go into the community in Govan Hill to install, install confidence in the people of Govan Hill? Secretary. Uh, officer, um, I know Govan Hill uh, very well and I regularly go through Govan Hill and one of the things that I have been struck by um, over recent times is a level of police presence within the Govan Hill area. Uh, one of the key areas of work that the uh, uh, police within uh, Greater Glasgow uh, 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 can man do is they work with the, uh, with the hub in, uh, in Govan Hill to work with a range of different organisations to support them. Um, I, uh, in recent times, was in a discussion with the local commander for the Govan Hill area, explaining to me the range of work that they undertake with a range of partners, whether it be in health and education. So, for example, uh, the schools in the area have, uh, have a, a officers based within the schools to work with children and to support them and to support teachers. Um, all of that work that is going on on a regular basis uh, in order to support and assist the community in addressing any of the issues and concerns which they have. Are there areas where they could possibly do further work? I've got no doubt in their ongoing engagement with the community within Govan Hill, they will explore and look at these matters. But I've been assured by Police Scotland and from what I've witnessed myself, uh, there is considerable engagement with the police and the local uh, community and I've got no doubt that they will want to continue to maintain that and build on that going forward. And Patrick Harvey. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I think we should all uh, acknowledge the seriousness with which these questions have been asked and answered uh, and, like the Cabinet Secretary, uh, give our support to the, uh, to the police and local authority agencies uh, who are looking to investigate uh, this situation. However, some of the situations that have been referred to south of the border have also, we know, been exploited uh, by those who seek to promote racist and Islamophobic ideas uh, on the back of that uh, dreadful situation. Uh, given that Govan Hill is an area with rich diversity, but also one which has been subject to stereotyping in the past, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the serious response to any genuine allegations must be handled in a way that avoids uh, inculcating those kind of stereotypes uh, or giving any opportunity to those uh, who seek to capitalise on it uh, to promote racist attitudes. Briefly, if you can, Cabinet uh, Secretary. Officer, the member has raised a very important issue. Now, I think uh, the uh, comments which have been made in the press over uh, this type of issue, uh, I think uh, uh, everyone has a responsibility to make sure that it is not exploited and used by those who would wish to uh, create uh, disharmony within the Govan Hill area. That is not to say the matters should not be thoroughly investigated. And I hope members are reassured that what Police Scotland and Glasgow City Council have said is that they are committed to doing that. Uh, Govan Hill is the most ethnically diverse community in the whole of uh, Scotland. Uh, and that brings a, a range of opportunities and challenges which go uh, with that. But in relation to these particular allegations, now is the time to get behind organisations who have a lead responsibility for investigating these issues and to support them in doing so, to identify whether there is exploitation of children taking place, and if so, to make sure robust measures are taken and actions taken against those who are the perpetrators of these crimes, but to also support and assist those children who have been exploited uh, during any period of time in the past. Thank you. Question number two, Claire Baker. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the Inspector of Prosecution in Scotland's review of the investigation and prosecution of sexual crimes. Lord Advocate. Yes, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Inspectorate of Prosecution reports to me as head of the System of Prosecution and Investigation of Deaths in Scotland. I'm grateful to the Inspectorate for its report, and I accept all of the Inspectorate's recommendations. Uh, the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service has a strong commitment to securing justice for the victims of gender-based violence and other sexual crimes, and a good track record in that regard. 
The service is well aware of the particular challenges identified in the inspectorate report. It has been implementing reform with a view to addressing them. It has established specialist high court sexual crime units to supplement the work of specialist crown counsel in the national sex crimes unit. Its pre-petition recovery plan has more than half the number of cases on pre-petition investigation in the past year. And earlier this year, the service revised its victim strategy to improve the support which it provides to victims of crime. The inspectorate's report identifies further improvements which the service can make, and those will now be taken forward. Claire Baker. Um, I thank the Lord Advocate for the reply. Um, the inspectorate report does make some sensible recommendations for the Crown Office about improving communication with complain complainers, which is to be welcomed and must now be implemented. What this won't address, however, are the very negative experiences of rape complainers of giving evidence in court, with some victims describing this as being worse than being raped. Will the Lord Advocate commit to working with the Scottish Government to introduce early video recording of evidence in sexual offences cases to avoid complainers having to give evidence in court? Lord Advocate. Uh, Presiding Officer, um, we, we as prosecutors cannot bring the perpetrators of gender-based violence <coughs> and other sexual crimes to justice unless victims have confidence to come forward and give their evidence. Uh, uh, as, the, uh, as uh, Claire Baker will be aware, um, the Scottish Courts and Tribunal Service has got um, uh, evidence of children vulnerable witnesses as a work stream in its evidence and procedure review. And the Scottish Government has also consulted on um, uh, uh, further measures to uh, improve the way in which evidence is taken from children and vulnerable uh, witnesses. Um, I will certainly continue to work with other agencies, um, including um, uh, 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 government, um, as we seek to uh, improve the system for uh, the victims of crime whom we're seeking to protect. Claire Baker. Um, another area of the report I wish to raise are forensics. I was recently approached by a young woman who had reported a rape a few weeks ago. Um, her description of the care she received, particularly of the forensic examination, will break your heart and make you angry. She described the experience to me like this. Think, just think how it felt at the time of the assault, how it felt being in a barren environment where basic needs were only just being met, heating, water, food, where the male forensic medical examiner did not have the tools to do the job. Um, is it possible this afternoon for the Lord Advocate um, to provide any assurances that urgent action is being taken to address the clear deficiencies in how forensic examinations are being carried out as highlighted in the report? Lord Advocate. Uh, I thank Claire Baker for that question. Um, the uh, CMO review is uh, addressing the whole, whole issue of forensic um, uh, medical examinations. Um, uh, uh, and uh, th 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 that's the appropriate forum through which these matters will, will, will and should be addressed. And question number three, Ivan McKee. Thank you. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what its assessment is, um, sorry, what assessment it will make of the impact on Scotland of the cost of Brexit. Mr Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government published analysis in August 2016 summarising the potential impact that leaving the EU could have on Scotland's GDP. This analysis was based on a range of recent economic studies. The analysis implies that by 2030, output in the Scottish economy could be up to £11.2 billion lower under a hard Brexit compared to forecast GDP in the absence of Brexit. Subsequent analysis by the Fraser of Allender Institute confirms the risk that a hard Brexit poses to Scotland's economy, predicting that after 10 years, employment in Scotland could be 80,000 lower after leaving the EU than would otherwise be the case. Ivan McKee. I thank the Minister for that. The, we've seen reports that Theresa May is set to double or more to 40 billion or more, who knows, the contribution that UK taxpayers have to pay to Brussels to secure a Brexit deal. Does the Minister agree, particularly given that Scotland didn't choose to leave the EU, that our budget and our public services shouldn't face more cuts to pay this Brexit exit bill? Minister. Well, uh, as the member points out, uh, Scotland didn't vote to, to leave the, the European Union, so it won't come as a great surprise to, to hear that I'm not tremendously enthusiastic about um, Scots having to, to shoulder 
uh, a share of the cost uh, associated with leaving uh, all that we were told uh, on the side of those buses uh, about uh, 350 million pounds or whatever it was coming into the country as a result of Brexit uh, have long since been dismissed uh, as uh, far from the truth. So there is a cost. The UK government's continued unwillingness to address the issue of the financial settlement within the EU negotiations does risk causing severe and long-term economic damage. And the Scottish Government does uh, remain deeply concerned that no meaningful discussions have yet taken place with the UK Government uh, on the precise detail of any EU funding guarantees. Ivan McKee. Chaos round this exit bill and other matters associated with Brexit shows the Tories are clearly bungling these negotiations. The case for Scotland's voice to be heard has never been stronger. Will the Scottish Government continue to demand a place at the table to protect our place in the single market? Minister. The Scottish Government does use the uh, opportunities that are available for us uh, to engage with the UK Government on the very issues that the member raises. Uh, there are, for instance, uh, the joint ministerial committees which exist, although uh, the main one of those uh, was not convened by the, the UK government during this crucial period for a period of some eight months. Putting that to one side, though, we do seek to engage very positively where we can, but we do feel it is our duty to point out, as the member has pointed out, that we are nowhere near any meaningful agreement between the EU27 uh, and the UK, and the UK government has thus far no clear plan in mind. Thank you. Apologies to members who wanted to get in.